Hi there, welcome to another of our fishing tips. This time we're concentrating on chub fishing on our local rivers. We're talking obviously the Kennet, the Thames and the Loddon, where the fish run particularly big. In fact, back end of last season, we saw several fish in excess of eight pounds coming out of those very rivers. We'll be looking at rigs in particular and at those two favourite winter baits. I mean, maggot fishing is a whole other thing. Bread and cheese. And we'll be looking at bread and cheese in its various forms and the rigs that will help you fish these baits effectively. Right, tackle first. Well, fairly straightforward. Uh, we're talking ledgering with these baits. Uh, myself, I use a soft to medium action, one and a half pound test curve, 12 foot rods. It actually says barbel on it, can you believe? But luckily the chub can't read. Uh, this is a Fox Barbel Duo, there are plenty of other rods like it. Uh, I find it ideal uh, when the fish run big and also uh, when I need to cast to the far bank of the Thames in particular. That's matched with uh, eight pound Darwa sensor, it's a line I particularly like, and the hook links, I tend to not go much below the uh, Refo power line, uh, the 019, I think that's seven pounds, six ounces. I'll occasionally go down to the 017, six pound hook links, don't really like to go much lighter, particularly when the fish run big. Um, on the business end of the tackle, we're talking quiver tips, and for chub, you really do want a glass twi quiver tip. Uh, I shall be fishing the Thames later on this afternoon. I'll need this three ounce tip uh, to go across, get a big bow in the line, and get those lovely drop back bites, which sometimes are unmissable. If I'm fishing down the inside, I'll go down to a two ounce tip in order to minimize resistance uh, on the fish. Right, to the business end. Glass is on for this bit, I'm afraid, at my age. Um, simplicity itself, really. Eight pound line, as we said earlier, through to one of the Drennan link beads, where you can very quickly change hook links. That's pretty important, as will be described later for changing rigs for to suit different baits. Above that, a little shocker bead. The reason for that is when you're casting out, it tends to hold the rig away from the feeder or, or the bomb itself. Simple snap swivel, bit of silicon on there, uh, just to stop uh, any tangles. And then the only real variation uh, is one of these really, really handy Drennan gripper stops. Uh, I like to slide one of these up the line uh, for two reasons. If there's a bit of rubbish coming down, quite often it will catch the rubbish as it comes down the line, as it comes down the current and keeps it away from your rig. But also, if you're fishing across the current for a drop back bite, you can slide that down within a couple of inches uh, of the rig, the feeder, uh, and when you do get a bite, um, obviously it's not so much a pull, uh, it springs back and gives you the drop back bite that you want. So that's really uh, the rigs themselves, very simple running ledger, not, nothing much to add to that. In terms of the hooks, if I'm hair rigging a bait, uh, I'll explain how we hair rig cheese uh, shortly. I uh, tend to use the uh, super specialist barbel hooks by, by Drennan. They're very good hooks for hair rigging. If I'm fishing the bait directly onto the hook, my go-to chub hook are these uh, medium wire uh, Camerson Wide Gapes uh, B983. Really superb hook. I also use them for perch fishing. Uh, but in the eights and the sixes, those are probably my go-to chub hooks. And then if I'm going down to a smaller piece of bread or a piece of punch, I'll be fishing a 14 or a 12 or a 10, and I want a strong hook. Uh, I'll, I'll go for the uh, uh, uh animal hooks. Uh, they are absolutely excellent. You'll never bend those out. So that's it. Pretty straightforward uh, setup. Um, only variations again. Uh, feeders, usually uh, if we're using liquidized bread in the feed, we'll use a, a grip mesh feeder of some sort. I guess in slightly deeper waters, you might want a, a more solid open-ended feeder. Um, and if you just want to fish the bait on its own, particularly a bait like cheese paste, I make up these swan shot links, as you can see there, just uh, a line of swan shot uh, on a loop piece of uh, stiff nylon. Again, all of those can go on the link swivel, they can be interchanged very, very quickly indeed. So, not much to it really, fairly straightforward, keep it simple, always the best way. Right, to baits. Well, let's start with bread, um, probably the oldest and most simple of baits. I like to use Warburton's, but frankly, any uh, processed sliced bread, the sort of stuff that you don't particularly like to eat, but the fish love, I find this ideal for flake. Uh, whatever's in the, this bread uh, makes it stick to the hook nicely. 
You can use it as bread punch or you can wrap it around the hook. But no problem at all with that. Bread crust itself, a few tips on that. Do not use supermarket bread for bread crust. Go to a baker's, buy a tinned loaf um, and cut the crusts off, leaving a good lump of flake underneath it. What I then tend to do is put the crusts in a freezer bag and then freeze them. Take them out when you need them. And the beauty of that is it makes the crust lovely and rubbery. See how that's not splitting? Makes it much easier to use on the hook. And I'll then be cutting off pieces of about that size uh, for ledgering on a big hook. We'll come onto the rigs for those in a minute. So that's bread, basically flake, punch or crust. Cheese, well we had a previous video on how to make cheese paste. So there is a piece of that recipe indeed. Uh, flavored blue cheese, cheddar, uh, I think there's a pastry mix in there and scented with garlic. Uh, so that's the cheese paste. And I talked earlier about cheese cylinders. Uh, big credit to my old mate in Reading and District Bailiff, Andy Dodd, for coming up for, uh, with this one. He favours, and I think he's absolutely right, Red Leicester cheese. Uh, good stuff, available from all uh, reputable supermarkets. The thing about Red Leicester is, it's got the kind of consistency of Edam. It's quite rubbery, so you can make these, punch out these lovely cylinders with an apple corer. Uh, great stuff to hair rig, uh, but it's mu much more highly flavoured uh, and got a good scent to it. Much more uh, smelly, basically, than, uh, than other cheeses. So Red Leicester cheese for hair rigging, uh, cheese paste uh, in, in the way that we described for uh, standard paste fishing. And that's basically it for the baits. The only other thing I would add is your liquidised bread. Uh, for chub, I don't mind liquidising up the crust and a bit, uh, bit of cheese goes in there as well, particularly if I'm going to be fishing uh, cheese cylinders or cheese paste. So that's the feed. Um, the only other secret ingredient, it's hardly secret, is a bit of garlic oil. You can buy these one cow sprays. One of our Reading District successful chub anglers, Jen Fox, put me onto this. It costs about 99p. Uh, and I, I spray this on my, on my liquidised, uh, give it a bit of flavour. Uh, something about garlic that chub and barbel in particular like. And then some little cheesy boilies. And I'll come on to those later. Uh, we're not really fishing for those, but we use those on the pastry. Uh, and that's basically it. Um, various combinations of fishing bread and cheese, but it's all pretty simple stuff. And finally, the sharp end. Uh, which rigs are most effective for fishing these four combinations of baits? Well, let's start off with the most simple. Um, that's uh, number eight hook. Again, all to the 019 hook link. I put them in these sweet little envelopes so I don't get confused. Uh, so there it is. Number eight, 983. Two and a half foot hook link. Couldn't be more simple. Um, piece of flake on the hook. Squeeze it on, round the shank. Bob's your ankle. That'll catch you plenty of chub. You of course can slightly modify that one by adding, if I can find it, a little bit of cheese paste. So you've got a a bread and cheese sandwich. That works well too. And finally, if you're not satisfied with that, one of the ways I actually fish my paste directly on the hook uh, is I take a little bit of crust from the side of a supermarket loaf, hook the crust through once, now I've made a mess of that, and twice, like so, so the point's exposed, and then a bit of cheese paste round the shank of the hook, like so, perhaps a little bit more than that, and then I like to pull it so I can feel the, yep, yeah, just feel the point of the hook against my thumb, and there you have crust and cheese paste, as I said before on previous videos, that's particularly effective because the crust takes out the weight of the hook. It also lets water get into the bait uh, and it pulls through really easily on the strike, uh, which is great for hooking the fish. So that's pretty good. That's rig number one. Okay, so our second rig is the crust rig. Um, slightly shorter hook link. Um, and as you know, crust is a pretty buoyant bait. Um, you can either hook the crust on directly 
uh, th with this method. Or alternatively, uh, what you can do uh, is you can use a baiting needle, put the baiting needle through the crust, and then because your hook link has got a, a nice loop on it at this end, let's see if I can even see to do this properly. There we go. And you can slide the crust down the line like so. And have it look like that. Either way, um, the crust will stay on there, particularly this sort of rubbery crust. If you want to weight it down or flavour it, of course, you can also smear a piece of cheese paste on the bottom of the crust and give it a spray with some garlic. Um, this can be either fish to waft around in the current on a longer hook link, or you can put a couple of shot down here uh, in order just to pop it up off the bottom. If there's a reasonable flow, it tends to push the bait very close to the bottom anyway. Right, well our third rig is the paste rig. Um, this is where we use the little boilies. Uh, in the past I've, I've talked about using meat screws or cork balls. Or, uh, so this is an alternative to fishing paste uh, with a bit of crust. So if you can see, I've got these, it doesn't really matter what they are, but they're Sonia Bates, cheese and garlic, uh, mini dumbbelly things, eight mil. Um, I've put one on a very, very short hair, right on the bend of the hook there. Um, obviously, if the paste washes away, you're still fishing with a bait, but that's not really the purpose of this rig. The purpose of this rig is to hold the paste in position whilst giving you plenty of hook point to show. So, you wrap the paste around the dumbbell and around the shank of the hook. The beauty of this is the paste and of course you want your cheese paste as soft as possible, which means it won't hold your hook that well, but it will hold very nicely around the body of that dumbbell. Um, and that's a, oops, it's a nice presentation there. Chub are famous for coming up and just picking up the bait in their, in their lips and then backing away, feeling for resistance. Uh, that is, I'm not saying guaranteed to hook, but you'll get far more hookups on paste with that sort of rig with plenty of steel showing uh, than you will with a stiffer paste uh, buried around the hook itself. So that's the paste rig, just a little hair rigged gizmo. I like to use a buoy, so there's some bait there uh, and a bit of paste wrapped around it. Couldn't be more simple, but it's very effective. And last but not least, our fourth rig. Uh, this is hair rigged cheese cylinders. Um, pretty straightforward. The Drenum Barbel hook I talked about earlier. Keep that cylinder very, very tight to the bend of the hook. Chub and long hairs don't mix. You'll end up missing lots of bites where the chub takes the bait but not the hook in. So you need a, sh a short hook link. In fact, in order to ensure that that sits nicely, rather than a traditional bait stop, I actually used a, a rubber maggot on there just to uh, effectively shorten the hair and, and, and get the bait in the right position. Uh, this red Leicester cheese, as I said earlier, casts brilliantly, smells good, stays out there. It's a good, strong texture. Fish like it. It's pretty immune to small fish. I and mean, if you do get a roach on that, it's going to be a roach worth catching. Uh, uh, and a very, very effective bait, particularly uh, behind a, a feeder with uh, liquorized bread and little bits of chopped up red Leicester in. That's certainly what I shall be fishing in the next couple of days on the Thames, uh, either that or, or bread or bread crust. Uh, so there you have it four useful and very efficient rigs for chub fishing. Well, that's quite enough from me. Um, let's have a look at some of the fantastic fish that our members have caught uh, over recent weeks from, from our local waters, particularly Dave Tarrant, Shane Page, Jen Fox, and one or two others.
Well, here we are on the Thames. I'm actually opposite the Redden District stretch at Maple Durham. Same bit of water, but we have access problems these days down here. And I know when the levels drop, this particular section of the river is very good for chub. And there's some big lumps here as well. So gone about two thirds of the way across on a bread feeder. Just had my first cast and we're waiting to see if Mr. Chubb's at home. So here's our bait in action on the banks of the Thames. And here's what it's caught. Six pounds, six ounces of beautiful Thames Chubb. How wonderful is that? Well, thanks very much for, uh, for, for watching. Hope you picked up a few useful trip tips there. And I hope that chub of your dreams comes along before March the 14th. Thank you very much. Tight lights.